What's going on, guys? It's your boy, Phil Shockley, the United States with the LPL Week 5 match. Week 4 match, I meant to say. Um, with uh, dashing here. And uh, this video originally wasn't going to really record it as a battle. It was going to be more like a discussion video. And I'm going to kind of explain uh, why in a second about this discussion video that I have in mind for you guys. I just realized I pulled that thing up and I can't do that anymore, which is stupid. Um, yeah, I'm not going to really go into depth about this battle, but I'm going to point out some things I think I was looking back at from watching the battle, and then now you're going to rewatch it. I'm going to want to go over the things that didn't make sense in this match and kind of go over some things that something happened here that I felt it was needed to be pointed out. So, if you guys are excited for the video, though, leave a like if you haven't already subscribed if you're new and enjoy the Phil Shocker video because you can join the community crew. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say this. I, know, I think I was breaking the fourth wall in so many videos where I was discussing about this game, and this is the game I was discussing about. But uh, we'll talk about that when we talk about it. So, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and get into this game here. We're taking on Dash, and like you guys said, and I think the last three times we faced Dashing in LPL, two of which, one, he got tilted off of Nihiligo, and the other one, we just really outplayed him, and we played really well. And then the other time, he beat us with Stall, and Stall was stupid. So let's go ahead and get just into this match here. So he actually leads off with his Dialga here. As I go for the Nature's Madness, he goes to the Earth Powers. I do live this hit, always guaranteed. And I go for Dazzling Thing just to weaken this thing down more. Uh, so he knocks us out. I was going to my Iron Treads with the Cork Drive here, and I'm going to go for the Earthquake. But what I actually failed to realize is I was Terrain Extender. Turns extender in this match, and uh, I was stupid, man. I was really stupid. I really did not think about why I would be turning extender in this match because he has Iron Valiant. He goes into the Iron Valiant here. I really think the and here's here's a miss. Here's something I really need to understand here. First off, that's my nickname. I was creative enough to run that. <laughs> Second of all, you guys gonna see here he clicks close combat. I want you all to know, I think this was a seriously bad play on their end. Now, if they were predicting me to stay in, predicting them to expect one of my ghost types to come in, then I'll give them all the mad props for making such a super sick play. But at this point in time, that play didn't make any sense. Because here's the reason why the play doesn't make sense. I literally have two ghost types on my team. Why would you click a fighting type move when I have two ghost types on this team? And why would you do that if I'm also possibly Chapel Berry in this match? If I'm, I'm possibly Chapel Berry, I live that hit and I kill you and I get rid of you. Why would you do that? So, I just don't know what the thought process there is. But, he reveals to be Life Orb here. I'm going to go to my Crescent here and uh, realize I'm a big idiot. And uh, did something I probably should not have done, which was Sack was just switching to this thing. Because now this thing's not healthy and uh, is not going to be able to take a hit. So that was actually a really dumb play on my end. I was really thinking he was going to double out into Greninja or into Snorlax possibly because Snorlax plus Greninja is also the best switch in right here. Because why would you risk getting – why would you just basically be willing to sack your, your Iron Valiant and stuff like that? You know what I mean? Like why would you sack, sack Iron Valiant when Iron Valiant is very crucial – to helping check things like Giratina. It can help check things maybe like my Crescent if you are Shadow Sneak Priority. It also could theoretically help against Chim Pao if you can live a hit from it. But he didn't. He just clicked Spirit Break. And then I was forced to switch out here, obviously. He clicked Spirit Break here again. And now basically I'm in a force of the position here where I'm just going to go ahead and click a move here. I go ahead and click, uh, I think it was Moongeist Beam or Psychic here. Uh, I clicked Psychic here to get the KO here. But he theoretically just was willing to sack away his Crescent, which, I again, I seriously don't understand his play. But you're going to see why I don't understand his play, because he's going to do what he's going to do here. And I guess that was his main reason he was willing to just throw away his Iron Valley, which, personally, if you want my opinion, he should have never been trying to throw this thing away to something, because Iron Valley has so much good utility. Again, it was faster than this, it was faster than this, it was faster than that. Like, he could have saved that thing and had it for so many more good utility purposes, so much good more offensive capabilities. Like, I feel like he just threw that thing away for no reason. But now he's going to go into Greninja here. I have to make a switch here. He's going to go to Dark Pulse. I need to go ahead and just sack my uh, Crescent. Now, it reveals to be Battle Bond. And this is where I am on tilt, frustrated, and very much so angry at this because um 
Maybe ask yourself a why. Battle Bond Greninja is, is not really all that great, man. All he is is a buff stat, and he has to be choice specs or life form, right? He's got to be specs or scarf to use it really well, right? No. Apparently, Battle Bond was a downgrade, but also a buff to Greninja at the same time. So now what happens with Greninja is that if it kills a Pokemon, and it's just like, again, it's the same old format. It just needs to kill one Pokemon to do this thing. It uh, gets a KO, and now it gets an instant plus one to attack, special attack, and speed. And I want to say this right now. I did not know that's what happened to Battle Bond. I've never seen anyone do a video on talking about Battle Bond. Uh, my friends never once mentioned Battle Bond. I did not know about what happened with Battle Bond. When I went into this matchup, I assumed Battle Bond was Battle Bond Greninja because of how Greninja was. I also wasn't expecting Battle Bond Greninja because I wasn't going to think he would bring that. Where Protein Greninja was good. And actually, for a second there, I actually didn't even realize he was Protein because I didn't see his type thing pop up. But when I see this, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I wish I had known information about this or I was told about this. Because I went into this battle not knowing this. And now you're going to see I literally just lose to this Greninja because of it. Because if I would have known that, I would have played around this Greninja smarter. I would have kept my Coco around for this thing. I would have made sure my Lunala was more healthier for this thing. So he could at least do some damage and wear it down and not prevent it. I would have probably then went with a Salt Fest over the Mystic Water that I was on my Palafin. So I could probably try to live a hit from this thing. I just had so many chances to be able to live a hit from it and be able to beat it. But, again, I didn't know about the information because then I could have maybe prepped this team differently. Be granted, this was a really bad matchup for me. I, I personally feel like it was a bad matchup for me. I just didn't have a lot of things that countered a lot of things on this team. And, again, when you have a limited team, like I purposely draft at times, you have to be try to plan around it. And we unfortunately couldn't plan around that. And... If I knew this, I could have maybe tried to build better. Maybe I would have brought, like, AV Tangrove to make sure we can take on this thing 1v1 and would have forced it to either just stay in Sackway's boost and get a kill off of it and then maybe have, like, an, another... If this is the same situation again where we'll have, like, three or two Pokemon to have to try to win the game and it goes 3v2 or 3v3, stuff like that, we can play around it, but... I don't know, but... Uh, the fact that I didn't know about this, I was very frustrated. So you're about to see right here that I'm very frustrated. And, uh... As you're going to see here, I'm, I'm very much on tilt. Uh, Septile says GG's, and uh, I don't see GG back because at that point in time, I was very on tilt, very just angry because I basically battled someone that knew something about their Pokemon that I didn't get the chance to know about. Now, I'm not saying I should have known about their Terra type or anything like that. I'm going to say this is information regards into a battle. Now, I want you guys to, if you guys, I know a lot of you guys just like to watch the videos and some like to comment, some don't comment, which is perfectly fine. If you guys just want to watch the video and, you know, leave and just leave a nice impression by it, go ahead. Just do ahead and do that. I'm not going to make you have to make a comment or anything like that. But if anyone that wants to make a comment, let me ask your opinion down below. Do you think if I didn't know something about a Pokemon's ability change or ability nerf or debuff and stuff like that. Do you think someone should point that out to you before a match? Or do you think that you have to find out during the match? And if you have to find out during the match, do you think that's unfair? Because for me, I'm personally at, at the moment, I'm a little bit still in the moment, but I can kind of understand that in the moment, I felt like it was unfair to me. He had an advantage with using a Pokemon that had an ability buff or ability do ability downgrade or upgrade type of thing. And I didn't need to know about it. And I couldn't prep on that Greninja to see or prep how I, went, I wouldn't want to go around it. Because I would have changed my prep a little bit. Not that I probably much. I probably wouldn't have brought Giratina maybe. I probably would have maybe gone with Tangrowth then over that. But I didn't, I didn't know about this Pokemon's ability buff. So that's where I feel like I was kind of like somewhat, not exactly cheated, but like unfairly disadvantaged going into the matches. I didn't get to know about this. Or do you think, you know, 
you could have looked it up. You could have, you know, asked anyone about all the buffs and debuffs, which is, again, another fair and bold statement that can be said. So let me, get, let me know your guys' thoughts. I think as of right now, I definitely think I've gotten over how mad it is. And now since I've seen it this one time, I will now always remember it. And if there's any opportunity I'm going to let people know about this ability buff that I haven't known about it, I will definitely do my best to make sure people knew about that. So, yeah, I'm going to not drag out this video any longer. I wanted to get this video done. I felt like it would only be fair for you guys to get the battle. I did say in all my other videos I was saying, like, I wasn't going to upload this game. I wasn't going to upload this. I was going to upload just a video talking about it. But I figured it would only be fair to show you guys the battle. Again, the things I want to take away from this battle, I think Dashing really just played reckless with his Iron Valiant. I definitely think he threw it away for no real reason, in my opinion. And he then had a Battle Blonde Greninja that had this buff that I didn't know about. So I think otherwise, I don't think anything really else came out of this matchup that it wasn't going to come out of this matchup. I had to play the best I could. And like I said, I had to play Maridon and Karidon back to back, which were tough matchups as it is. Only lost the one against Karidon because my opponent was Scarfed, and I felt like Scarf Karidon was a waste of a set, to be honest with you. But this matchup as well was really tough, and then next week's matchup was really tough being Lucas, but you guys are already going to see that matchup be recorded, and I'll talk about that matchup already as well, too, going into that. So, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling, though. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, share, and all. Again, let me know your thoughts and comments down below. If you think in an instance like this, do you think it was unfair to me then to go into this battle with not knowing the knowledge about Greninja's buffs or debuffs? Or do you think, you know, it's on me for not wanting to do the research on the Pokemon and going to the battle knowing it when I should have expected it then from that point? So just let me know your thoughts and comments down below about it. And until next time, guys, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day. Peace.